Good evening and uh, praise the Lord. I pray that you had a wonderful weekend and um, I also pray that God washed over you, you and your entire household. I'm, we've been talking about healing and if, you, if you've been following very carefully, I've been consistently telling you that God wants to hear you. But there is a process to healing, whichever kind of healing you're looking at. But today I want to share with you, and I am going to request that you pay very, very, very close attention so that you can get the revelation. You know, everything that I minister, it should come to you by revelation, or anything that anybody ministers to you, whether it is you studying your personal word, everything should come to you by the Spirit of God, by revelation. Now, uh, today I want to draw your attention to um, a, a very interesting subject, and it's exactly how I want to show you how healing comes. If you will go with me to the Word of God in Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, I want to read that particular scripture for you, and then I will begin to minister to you about uh, the message the Lord gave me today. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. And it says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. He says, It's not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit. I, now, I want to say this to you, and I, I pray that you will understand it um, with the ears of the spirit. Sometimes we try so hard to get healed, and it doesn't work. Sometimes we try too much, and it doesn't work. Now, I'm, I want to draw your attention. So two key words that I, I want to focus on today. There is a difference between effort and strength. Now, effort is the determination um, to do something. It's the determination within to do something or to achieve something. But strength is you using the power within you or the strength within you to achieve something. Now, the Bible says in Zechariah 4, 6 that it is not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. So in other words, in that statement, God nullifies your power, and your might, which is the ability of yourself, in as far as anything yourself is concerned. Now, let, let's take an example. Have you realized that sometimes the more you chase something and, and put in almost all your strength, the more it doesn't... You wake up and, and you give it everything you can and, and you're relentless and you, you push. You, you give everything. You do absolutely everything. Now, sometimes we mistake that for being spiritual. When we're pushing so hard, and I mean we're persistent every day. I discovered by the Spirit of God that sometimes we pray out of strength and might and not necessarily by the Spirit. Let me draw you a line before I come back to what I was telling you. Is that sometimes when we are praying in the flesh, in the, by, by strength and by might, this is what happens, is that there is a restlessness in your spirit. There's an anxiousness that is bathed deep within you that denies you sleep. But I want to share with you the difference between might, strength, and by the spirit. When, when you begin to pray by the spirit, there is a peace that floods your heart. There is a certainty that you possess, there's a calm 
deep within because your entire attention on the Lord Jesus and trusting him completely. Now, when you pray by the Spirit and walking by the Spirit and doing things by the Spirit, now, you cease to focus your attention on time, but you begin to trust his timing. Set for yourself, and, and you entirely focus on the deadlines of heaven. Now, it doesn't matter to you when or how long it may take the Lord to answer you, but you know for certain that whichever time God chooses to reveal Himself to you in a way of a manifested answer to prayer, you will appreciate it knowing that it has come from the Lord. Now, that's the position that Abraham was in. Now, Abraham, God made a promise to him of giving him a child, healing him and his wife of barrenness when he was 75. But you see, along the way, Abraham's wife, Sarah, removed her eyes and began to look at everything from the realm of the natural by might and by strength. She began to look at it that way. She began to think, wait a minute, I'm actually getting old. So she drew her entire attention to the flesh, to her body. And said, wait a minute, I'm getting old, you're getting old. If we're going to have a child, we must do something. Since we've proven that I cannot give you a child, you take my Egyptian maid, you have a child with her. Now, in as, in as far as the natural realm is concerned, that Sarah's alternative was completely logical. But you need to understand that the things of the Spirit do not have logic to do with them. They don't even have reason to do with them. They've got faith to do with them. In, in as far as healing is concerned, is that a, a lot of times we focus so much on our strength and what we can do and trying to get healed. And, and we, we are relentless. Now, if the same thing happens when we pray, sometimes we pray, we don't get answers because we don't even know that you could take out a three day fast and you pray 40 days straight and you don't even know that you are praying in the flesh. And yet, God has said very clearly, it's not by power nor by might. But by my spirit. So for, for you to be able to and over my just effort and strength. Now they may sound similar, but effort and strength are completely two different words. Now effort is you building capacity within you and determination within you to achieve something. You know? But strength is you rising up knowing that I'm gonna have to pray. 20 straight hours. Now you could pray in the strength 20 straight hours and your strength may go all the way to go all the way. Because the, the things of the spirit don't have anything to do with the flesh. So, sometimes we don't get healed because we try so hard. Now, we try so hard to get healed. But God does not want you to try so hard to get healed. God just wants you to simply believe and you'll be healed. That means if, if there is healing, it is going to come by the spirit. It will come through a method or a mechanism or a channel, or an avenue, or an angle, you don't, you don't even think that healing could come from there. Now, N N Naaman, if you read the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, Naaman did not expect that healing, his healing would be that easy, and that it would come by dipping himself through water. Now, Jesus at some stage spat on the ground. In John 9, he spat on the ground, then he made clay out of the mud, and smeared on the man who had been born blind. And then he gave him an instruction and told him, go and, uh, and dip yourself, wash yourself at the river, at the pool of Siloam, and you'll be healed. He said, you go and wash, and you'll be healed. I mean, think about it medically. It was completely without strength, but there was effort. No might, there was no power, but everything was complete. Now, he didn't try to get anybody healed. Now, it's the same thing if we're in the ministry of healing, is that you don't try to induce the anointing to get somebody healed. That's completely wrong. A healing happens by the Spirit of God. John 6, 63, Jesus said that only the Spirit gives life. He said, human effort accomplishes nothing. He says, only the Spirit gives life. So sometimes when we try so hard, you, you need to be certain that your effort, your trying, is it by the spirit or is it by the flesh? So sometimes we don't get healed. Why? Because God looks upon you 
And he sees that you have been trying to get yourself healed and yet to be certain with you is that if you try to get yourself healed and let's say you get healed, you know what's going to happen to you? You will take the glory of God. And you will say, it is because I pray that I got healed. It is because I fasted that I got healed. Now when you do such things, you still unbroke the glory of God. Because God did not say in Exodus 15, 26, He did not say that and you shall pray and you shall fast and you shall do all things and then you get healed. No. He says, for I am the God who heals you. So what we need to understand is that in your pursuit for healing, are you pursuing healing by the Spirit or you're trying to pursue healing by the flesh? Because if you try to pursue healing by the flesh, I would like you to to say this categorically is that your healing may most likely take longer. Why? Because anything of the flesh, anything which is which comes out as a result of the strength of the flesh, the might of the flesh, it robs God of the glory. It robs God of healing. Now, I've had people say when, when I ask, how long have you been sick? Well, I've, I've been sick for a while. I've been trying to get healed. I've, 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 been, I've tried. I mean, then they begin to list the blessings they've gone to. I've gone to this pastor. I've gone to this pastor. I've gone to this pastor. Now, I, I want to say this. One time in 2017, I met a lady. Um, she had been sick. And um, she had had excruciating pain in her stomach. Now, they have no idea how the pain started. So, back in 2017, we used to do the fellowship both on Tuesday and on Saturday. So, I remember that day Pastor Isaac was preaching. I was ushering at the door. This lady, and she could barely stand, she could barely sit. Now, she was in so much pain that she used to move around with bottles of morphine. Little tins of morphine. So, every time the pain would come, it doesn't matter where the pain would find her she would um, quickly uh, get the medicine using the, the, the syringe and, and inject herself. Now she resorted to putting on torn trousers uh, slightly by the thigh so that she could administer the pain because the pain would be excruciating. It was terrible. So I asked, what have you done? And then they said, we've gone every we've gone to every shake, we've gone to every shrine here in Kampala. They said, we've gone everywhere. But the pain just could not stop. I said, how long has the pain been there? And she said that the pain has been there for five straight years. And then now, because of the pain, a doctor, a medical doctor, recommended that this lady should get pregnant. He told the father of the girl that let your girl get pregnant because the pain is in the stomach. If she gets pregnant, the pain will go away. Now, imagine this man accepted the doctor's advice and arranged for his daughter to be pregnant by a neighbor. Can you believe that? Are you seeing the wickedness of Satan? So they arranged for the neighbor to pregnant the daughter. Indeed, it worked. Yes, it did work because when she got pregnant, the pain uh, went away. Her weight came back. But the instant that she gave birth, the pain came right back. And she was back on using morphine. They even began to sneak in drugs from out of the country of cocaine so that they could now, when she came that day for the fellowship, Pastor Isaac finished to preach, then I went to pray for the sick, and I saw this lady, and um, I asked her a question, and I said, so, how long have you been sick? She couldn't even stand, and she said, I've been, it's been over five years, and this pain just doesn't seem to go. Now, while she was standing there, the Lord spoke to me by the Spirit and said to me, that rebuke the spirit of witchcraft and she'll be well. And then he said to me, she's been trying to get healed for the past five, six years. She's been trying to get healed. Now that statement stuck in me. She's been trying to get healed. So I prayed with that lady, prayed for her that day. The people who were there at the fellowship, they remember. And the pain left her because I had the Lord say, rebuke the spirit of witchcraft. And it left her instantly. It was there and then. Now when I asked her to come and meet me later in the evening to bring me evidence of this sickness, she brought me a, a bottle, a big bottle of cork. And it had tiny little, little ones for morphine. And 
and she said to inject herself at least 15 times. So when she brought the bottle, she told me that these ones were only for today. Now, but you see, for all the five years, she'd been trying to get healed. And yet when she, that day when we met, her healing did not even take five minutes. Because no healing heals you, but it is by the Spirit of God upon them that healing is possible through their hands. Now, when they told me their story, I noticed that they had been trying to get healed. Now, what do I call trying to get healed? Trying to get healed is looking for healing independent of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to know that until you come into contact with Jesus Christ, healing does not take place. I want to be very frank with you. Is that until you come into contact with the Son of God, until Jesus becomes real, everything else you do is that you are trying to get healed. Try to do almost everything except one thing find Jesus. I have, I've had people trying, people want to come out of a situation. But you see, you're more focused on trying to come out of a situation than lifting up your eyes to Jesus. Now, let me tell you, the Israelites sinned against the Lord. When they were in the wilderness, they sinned against God. And God sent fear of and they beat them and many of them died. As a matter of fact, when it stunned you, the next immediate thing was death right there and then. And then the Israelites cried out to God. And the Lord God Almighty did not tell Moses to make a certain concoction for medicine so that they could take it. He, he did something that I want to focus your attention today on. Is that he told Moses, make us a bronze serpent and lift it upon a pole. And he said, and whoever is bitten by the snake. All they have to do, for as long as you are bitten by the snake, all you have to do is to look upon the cross, to look upon the snake, the bronze serpent, and you will be healed. Now, he told, he, he didn't try to tell them to try and get healed. Now, they knew that the answer to healing lay in Moses inquiring of the Lord, how shall I get healed? They didn't try to get healed. They didn't try to get medicine. They didn't try to do anything else. What they focused their eyes If you're stung by the snake, don't call me, don't pray to me, don't seek medicine, lift up your eyes and you look upon the snake, the bronze snake. That means if you don't open your eyes to look, you will die. But let's look at how much effort does it take? How much effort does it take for you to lift up your eyes from point, to move your eyes from point A to point A? How much strength does it take? It almost takes nothing. What does it take? It just takes effort. It takes zero strength for you to move your eyes from one location to another. It just takes... Nobody will ever tell you, I spent so much strength lifting up my eyes or opening them. No, it takes zero strength to open them. It just takes effort to open the eyes. So the Lord told Moses, He said, whoever is stung by a snake, all they have to do is to lift up their eyes and look upon the serpent. But today... We are trying so hard to get here, except look upon Jesus Christ by the Spirit. That's what we're trying to do. Now, that's the reason why we, we've been sick for so long, and all we are saying is that we've been stuck in an impossible situation. And we've been not because God does not have the will to heal us, not because He's changed. But I will say that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. I want you to understand that your strength is stumbling you. Your might is stumbling you. The strength and might, two things that are detestable in the eyes of God, almost is as equivalent, as equivalently as it is sin, it is strength and might. Because once strength and might come in, then the position of the Holy Spirit is undermined. Then now you take the glory, you focus your entire eyes entirely on your strength and what you can achieve, you as you. So most people are trying to get healed. You are trying so hard, and if you even hear you try. I've done everything I can to try and get healed. But God did not say you should try and get healed. He did not tell the Israelites in the desert to try and get healed. All he asked them to do was to lift up their eyes and look upon the bronze. But today, the Son of God has been lifted up. So when we try to get healing outside of the Son of God, 
it almost becomes impossible for you to get healed. Why? Because we're trying so hard. And, and it's unfortunate that today we seem to be encouraging people to try so hard. Try harder. Try again. Try again. I, I mean, but you see, we're not explaining to them everything you do. It should not involve your power. It should not involve your mind. It should not involve anything of you or anything of the flesh. Why? Because the Lord says it's clear. He says, only the Spirit gives life. It's not by power, nor by might, but by my Spirit. Because if you involve those two, strength and might, then the role of the Holy Spirit becomes irrelevant. And then how does your healing come? Because healing only comes in the name of Jesus Christ, but by the Holy Spirit. To get healed. I'm going to give you biblical examples of people that try to get so healed and they've been there for so long. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. I want to read for you this man's story. I know you know it back. It says, after this, there was, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the ship gate a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. Now in this lay a great multitude of the sick people, blind, limb, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well or whatever, or whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Now when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is turned up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. He says, while I'm coming. Now, now this man, for 38 years, had been trying to get healed. 38 years. So I want to ask you a question. What have you been trying to do for 38 years? I want you to know that in the absence of Jesus Christ, they can be regardless of how hard you try. Now, now today it, it seems so fashionable to seek for, the, for everything else around the Lord except the Lord Jesus himself. But I want you to know that trying so hard does not deliver the result. Because everything that God will do for you will happen by the Spirit. And that's why he's very specific. Zechariah 4, 6 is not by power, nor by might. If your healing is going to come, listen to me and listen well. It is not by power, nor by might, but by the Spirit. Now let me give you practical examples to do with your own day-to-day -day life. Have you ever wanted something so bad? And you chase it so desperately and you you are relentless you want this job so bad so bad you follow it up every day you make phone calls you send mails you do almost everything it could be a business deal you chase it in every corner and it just doesn't come and then you arrive at the point of death now I want to explain to you the point to the, the point of death uh, I don't mean physical death now you arrive at the point of where you are dead. You become dead to something. Now, now for instance, you've been chasing a job. And you've chased it so badly. You know, when you chase it for the first one month, when you've just applied, you're so full of energy, you're expecting a phone call. The second month, you know, there's a way you still have strength. The third month, you intensify prayer. The fourth month, um, you're getting tired. Now your strength is running low. Your morale is running low. The fifth month, you begin to say, well, I don't think they will really call me. I think they already shortlisted and they moved on to somebody else. The sixth month, you say, you know what? It's all right. Well, if they call me, they call me. If they don't call me, so be it. Not a problem. Then, now you reach a point of death. Now the point of death is you die to that Um, You are you don't really care. You have crossed a threshold where you, you really do not care whether they call you or they don't call you. Now, until we cross that point of death in the spirit where you are dead to your flesh, you are dead to your strength, you are dead to your mind, we don't really cross into the realm of the spirit. Now, when you are dead and forgotten, before you know it, 
you get a phone call and, and this phone call it just comes you hello is this chris and you say yes this is me uh, did you remember you applied for this job and it was um five six months ago and then you begin to run your mind which organizations this please remind me i'm not trying to be proud i'm just don't i don't remember because it's been a long time and to be honest with you you have really forgotten me. why because you, you reached a point of death and you say lord lord that's it i'm done then only to remember that you applied for this job over six or sometimes it could even be a year away and you just completely forgot but because you reached a threshold where you died to it you crossed into the realm of spirit you moved into the perfect trust with god and now you're trusting god completely and then they surprise you and they get that job now i want you to know that almost every one of us when we arrive to that point where you are dead to something only when you're still until your strength dies, until you're dead to your strength, dead to your effort, then the spirit of God cannot take over. Now I, I have learned, I have learned the hard way. Uh, this I'm telling you from personal experience. I have learned from the hard way is that when the Lord says it's not by power but by mighty, really, He really means. It. I have learned the hard way. I'm a pusher. I like to push things. I like to get things done. I believe that nothing is impossible. So sometimes I, I would give so hard. Everything, and then at the end of it all, you get paid so little, and you just you you get this little thing, and you look at it and you say, "Can you imagine all of those months and, and years are bad It is because of this little thing." And yet, the, this is the thing about the Holy Spirit: is that the things that really come from God. I want you to know that the things that genuinely come from God, they will have zero strength from you. They will have zero mind from you. As a matter of fact, almost everything that comes to you from the Spirit of God will take you by surprise. But here's the thing. Your reaction says so much. The thing of God, your heart won't be but it will be full of gratitude. And the things of God that are done by the Spirit of God, they don't bring pride in our hearts, but they humble us. But the things that we have achieved in our own strength, the things we have achieved in our own effort by trying so hard, they bath pride in our hearts. Why? Because then now you believe that it was because of your strength and, and because of that you actually denied God the glory. But when it is by the Spirit of God, when it is by the Spirit, there is a peace, there is a joy, there is a calmness. Your heart is not anxious at all. Why? Because when you are asked to testify, if it had not been for the Lord, I would not be here. It doesn't matter on what day they call you, somebody calls you. Say, so how did you get this job? You know how? You will not hesitate in public. You will say, no, 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 no. It is not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That will be your answer. So if you look at your life, everything you've tried so hard to achieve, it hasn't come through. Or if it has come through, it has come at such a cost and it has broken you. Now, sometimes when you try so hard, we get taken so much for granted. That's when you are abused. That's when you are insulted. That's when you are despised. That's when you are cheated. Can you believe? But everything that is by the Spirit of God, it has got completely, absolutely to do with you. Just look at your life. If you'll be honest, the thing that have brought so much regret to you and the thing that have broken your heart the most are the things you tried so hard and you put in so much of your effort. That is what I call trying so hard. They brought so much regret to you. 
Have you tried so hard to get a job and you paid all manner of bribe? Have you tried to get a business deal and you, you compromise so much on everything? Have you tried to be, I don't know what situation you find yourself in right now, where you actually compromise on so much and you give so much of yours, you give of yourself, you give of everything and you reach a point where you've got nothing to give. Because you're trying to please someone or please people or do something. And all of that, according to the eyes of God, becomes a stumbling block. It becomes the reason why we actually don't get healed. But then, there comes a situation where you don't even put in your strength. You don't struggle so hard. But things just fall in place. And your healing just comes. If God is truly to bless you, I'm not saying it won't come without effort. That's why I try to explain to you the difference between effort and strength. The things of God may not come without effort, without strength, but they will certainly come with effort. Your, the effort is your involvement in it by believing God and the determination in your heart that you're going to succeed, that you're going to get healed. But if it is surely from I'm not saying it won't be difficult. I'm just saying there is a peace that will come with it. And when you look down and trust, you surely know it had to be God. You will know in your heart or heart that this was not the hand of man. Let me tell you, you have to learn to trust the Spirit of God in the things that happen around you. If you don't trust, trust the Spirit of God, in the things that happen around you, chances are you're going to rely so much on your strength and on your power, which will only delay your healing from coming. Now, this man, 38 years, all he focuses his eyes on is that I need to try and get myself into that water. Now, his entire mind was focused on, I need to try. The first year, it didn't work. The second year, nothing. 10 years, nothing. 20 years, nothing. 30 years, nothing. Now, this is in trying. That we say that while I'm trying to get in, somebody else gets in ahead of me. While I'm trying to get in, somebody else gets in. So sometimes when we try to get married, we, we, we eat a snack. When we try to have children, it just gets complicated. When we try to do business, it gets complicated. When we try to purchase property or build a house, it just gets complicated. Why? Because if you be a child of God, the Holy Spirit wants to do things through you a certain way. He wants to do it for you. He wants you to ask in faith and then let him do it. But that way you will be able to give the glory to God, not to man. Don't you think that God prides in healing you? Don't you think that God wants to be able to bless you? Now, if God could heal three million Jews in the desert, and all they had to do was to lift up their eyes and look at the broad snake. Don't you think that today all you need to do is to lift up your eyes and put them on Jesus and let your healing take place without your strength? Because you try so much, we're never going to get healed. I want you to know this today that the more you try so hard to get healed, the more you draw your eyes away from the Son of God and you focus your eyes entirely on your flesh, entirely on your, on, your, on your mind, entirely on what you can achieve and what you can do in your own strength. Now, the moment you do that, you close the door for the Holy Spirit and you make your healing take a little longer. So, what defines complete rest in the Lord? What defines complete and absolute trust in the Holy Spirit? What defines it? How then do you define that you are completely, completely depending on God? Like I said before, is that peace floods your heart and then you trust Him knowing that regardless of when this answer is actually going to come, I know without a doubt that it is going to be in my favor. Now, look at it this way. In Mark, I want to take you here to the woman with the blood flow. This woman, Mark chapter 5, I want to read for you, Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Now, 
A certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians and she had spent all that she had and was no better but she grew worse. Now, now she, with all of her mind, she tried everything because she knew that maybe doctors are going to So she gave everything. She spent, the Bible says she spent everything but instead of her getting better, she got worse. Why? Why did she get worse? It is because she was doing it with all of her strength. Now, she had spent everything. But what really happened when she came face to face with Jesus? What happened? I want to just draw to your attention to the difference between might and strength. Of God now for what happened. He said, Now, verse 27 says, Now, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garments. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. The Bible says, verse 29, immediately of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Now, imagine for 12 years she tried everything in her power she sold everything sold her property now she became obsessed that the only thing she thought about was healing when she heard that there's a doctor in this place she goes when she heard that there's somebody in this place she heard that there's a new doctor coming in from greece she was right what was she doing now remember that for as long as you're doing it in the flesh as long as it is by might and by strength I want you to know it will cost you physically. And everything that she had died. But look at the difference between the things of the flesh and the things of the spirit. She said to herself, if I may touch his garment, I will be made well. And the Bible says that she actually touched him. The moment she touched him, the blood flow stopped. Now look at the effort. I want us to look at just how much did it cost for her healing to take place. Now this side, it took her 12 years. But here, it didn't even take 10 minutes because all she did was to come behind him and touch. No appointment, no nothing. All she did was to come behind him and touch the clock of his garment. That's all she did. She just touched his clock. That's all she did. But for 12 years, she did everything in her power to try and get healed. In her strength, in her mind, she did everything by the power. She did everything. The sickness drove her to the wall until she heard about Jesus. Then she said, wait a minute. Oh, if only I can touch him. She said to herself, if only I can touch him, touch the garment, I will be made well. Now that is by the Spirit. The moment she touched him. Now think about it this way. If this woman had started with Jesus, what do you think would have happened? Is that her healing would have would have been saved a whole lot more just by touching him. She would have been saved more. Now, I want to tell you just how desperate sometimes as we are as children of God. Now, I'll tell you what happens in the body of Christ. Now, the flesh can really drive us. Now, when you hear, when you're sick, when you hear that there's a man of God and he's in this particular place, well, oh, it's for you. You're going to get healed instantly. Do you know what you're going to do? You're going to board. You don't care the cost. You're going to board because you want help. Now you get there, you're disappointed. Then from there you hear, oh, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. He's in Rukonjiri, you need to go. Now before you know it, you're on a bus. Where are you going? You're going to Rukonjiri. You're not looking for Jesus, you're looking for a man. Now you're going to Rukonjiri, but you, you've forgotten that it's Jesus Christ that heals. You get to Rukonjiri, it doesn't work. Then they tell you, you know what? There is this pastor in Kampala, you need to go. If only he can speak in your life instantly, I can tell you, you'll even get a job the next day. Now you want to base on somebody's testimony to tell you luck. Now you travel back to Kampala. Before you know it, they're telling you, oh, there's a pastor in Kitgum, you need to go. You're in a bus. Now, what's the difference between you and this woman of 12 year blood flow? I don't see a difference. Because she was moving from physician to physician. You, you could be the same. And yet Jesus is waiting and trust him and pray a simple prayer. I want you to know that the prayer that heals, it's not prayed in a special way. I want to give you a testimony. 
One time I just arrived in uh, South Sudan in Juba. But I want you to know how certain is such a fool. I arrived that night and I go into the room and then I, I, I prepared myself. Then I went to bed. So then the Lord woke me up to be in His presence at about 3 a.m. in the morning. So I got up at 3. But do you know what happened? When I got up in the morning, I, I don't know, you know this infection that attacks your eye and then there's this whole swelling on the eye. Now I get up and for some reason I go to the bathroom. I never turn on the lights in the night. So I turn on the bathroom lights. When I turn them on, my right eye had a swelling. Now where was the swelling? It wasn't on top. It was inside, just below the eye. And then here's a funny thing is that it had developed, now normally when that swelling comes, it takes you about a couple of days, then it can get right, then maybe it will pass or something. Now this one, I went to bed, I didn't have it. When I got up in the morning, when I got up at 3 a.m., and that's about four hours away, when I got up at 4 a.m., the thing was right there in my eye, and it was yellow, meaning it had been there, gotten there, then gotten right instantly. What, what manner of witchcraft is that? And it had gotten right. You know what I said in the bathroom? I said, Lord, really? What? Imagine, I've come to Juba to pray for the sick. Then here I am, my eye is sick. Now let me tell you what I did. I didn't burn any demons, I want you to know. Is that the simple prayer of faith brings healing to your bones. I just went to my bed, I knelt down and said, Lord, you know that I will not stand before the people and tell them that you are a God who heals when I am sick. And I said, as far as I know, this thing has got no permission to be in my eye. I said, I will go to bed. When I wake up in the morning, you just can't be there. I began to speak to him. I said, you've got no permission to be in my eye because I'm going to preach. I said, Lord, I will not preach. I can't preach healing. When I have a blind eye, how does that work? And I'm preaching here, and I'm not even blind naturally, but because something came into my eye, I said, that's unacceptable, Lord. It was a simple prayer, a declaration to my father. I was only talking to my father. And I went to bed. I want you to know the power of God. I rise up in the morning. I, I it, it, Now, let me tell you just how faith works. I get up in the morning. I didn't rush to the kitchen, to the bathroom. I got up, got on my knees, after prayer, I went in the bathroom to pray. I forgot that there was even something. That's the thing about the Holy Spirit, is that you're anxious for nothing. I forgot that there was a swelling. I went to brush. Let me tell you what happened. As I was I up at three, the eye, only to open. When I opened it, there was nothing. You guys, you need to know that there's a God in heaven. When I opened, there was nothing in the eye. I didn't even, I didn't even waste my time. Um, you know, you know the excitement. Normally, I'm into script. Oh yeah, I'm here, I'm here. No, I would do that. I just said, Lord, depression. I didn't even dwell on it. That's the thing of the Holy Spirit. That's exactly how God wants us to live our lives is that he wants you to live your life exactly like that, trusting him and depending on him to do things through you and for you and in you and not you focusing anything on your strength, anything in the, in the natural. That's why everything that has come to your life, it, it has come, when it has come by the Spirit, but you know, I didn't deserve this. Now that is always a constant reminder that it was not your strength that did that. You always remember that I, I did not do this. So don't be like the woman of the 12 year blood flow. I know that we focus our attention entirely on her miracle, but I want to focus your attention today on the 12 years she wasted. Don't spend 12 years trying to get healed. Don't 12, spend 12 years trying to, trying to get as, achieve something and do something. I want you to know that by the time you're done with that whole process, you'll be so afraid that you'll begin to cast God. And yet, if you move in a position of trusting God, allowing the Holy Spirit to do it through you, 
your healing comes quickly. Now, I want you to know that the God, you know, healing is healing. The same God that heals um, a headache. That's the same God that heals a diabetes. Let us not confuse the two. The Lord says, John Exodus 15, 26, I am the God who heals you. He doesn't categorize sickness. He just says, I'm God who heals you. So what sickness do you have? Is it financial? The Lord says, I am the God who heals you. Remember, it is Him who heals you, not by your strength. It's not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. So if God wants to heal you, but it's not going to be by your strength, it's to your own healing. You could be the obstacle to your own destiny and to the plans that God has for you. The promises that God has made to you, I want you to know that the promises of God are yes and amen. If God has made a promise to you, he will do it. If you put in your strength and try so hard, you're going to frustrate yourself in the process and the Spirit of God will just watch you run around in circles. But the day you say, enough is enough, I've had enough. I'm not going to do it in my strength anymore, but I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit. I want you to know, the one thing that God taught me is that he's not deaf. And the Lord said to me that when you pray, I want you to know that I'm here. And that when I hear, you know that I've heard you and that I will answer you. So don't, don't make it seem as though God is deaf. That's the reason why I'm always cautious when people want to repeat praying over the same thing over and over. I know that sometimes they're trying so hard because they take out the spirit from it. Do you know that most times when you pray by the Holy Spirit, you will even forget you prayed for something. You just completely forget and wait for God because you have moved yourself in a position of trust, not in a position of trying. So when you ask me today, how are you doing? Well, I'm we are trying. What are you trying? That's the strength. That is the flesh. Now, when you go to pray and you try to pray, I want you to know chances are that you are going to get frustrated because you've been trying to pray by the flesh. You heard somebody say, pray for three straight hours. I will tell you, you may try it for the first day, second day, third day, you won't pull it off. Why? Because you do not have a real motivation to pray. And yet, if you allow to go to pray by the Spirit, Without you trying, child of God, you, you could do five, ten hours. It's the same thing with fasting, is that we are not able to successfully fast because we are trying to fast. You want to do it in your strength, in your power, in your might. That's how you want to try to do it. And yet God doesn't want you to do it. He wants it done by the Spirit. He says it's not by power, nor by might, but by my Spirit. Now when you fast and it is by the Spirit, you won't even notice you've gone 50 days. Other people say to me, how do you, but how do you fast? 40 days. I want you to know it depends on who you're looking at. If you're looking to Jesus, you're going to do those 40 days. You won't even know they're 40. But if you look to man and what man thinks of you and look to your flesh, I want to guarantee you, you won't last two days. So there's a difference between trying so hard to get healed and allowing the Holy Spirit. When you allow the Holy Spirit, for instance, business, I tell people, that if it is business, let the Holy Spirit lead you. He knows where your strength lies. But you can't begin selling tomatoes today. Then tomorrow you, you say, ah, you know, I think I need to stop selling. Then now tomorrow you begin to say, I think my these guys sell a lot of meat. You know, then you, before you know it, now you left tomatoes, now you're selling meat. Now before, because somebody else said, ha, for me, I sell chicken legs and they sell them. You say, oh. I'm going to go to Kumi and get chicken. I don't want the meat, I just want legs. Why? Because you heard that chicken legs sell a lot because uh, somebody is buying chicken legs for his dog. Now you go. And then before you know it, somebody is saying, well, you know, for us, Molokoni works. Before you know it, you are now in the business of Molokoni. Now, in a span of one year, you have been a jack of all trades. You have done 12 businesses and have succeeded at none. Now, that is strength of the flesh. How are you going to get healed financially if you are scattering and spending money on two different businesses without giving the Holy Spirit a chance to make it work? But I want you to know that if it is by the Spirit of God, you could just sell tomatoes. And I'm telling you, go to the market. Find a person who is doing a business led by the Spirit of God. They will have a beautiful smile. There's a calmness upon them. Now, go and find a person that is doing things by their strength and by their effort. You will hear from them. Now they will talk to you like you're their, like you're their husband. Now they, the way they will raise their voice. If it's a woman, she's going to raise her voice. You may think you shut the bed. 
You know, then people say, oh, these are bad manners. No, it may not be bad manners, but she is trying to do it so hard to make it work. She's trying to make it work. Don't try so hard. Because the more you try so hard, the more you push away the Holy Spirit. Don't try so hard to get healed. Let the Holy Spirit heal you the easiest way. I want you to know is that the people that I've prayed with, I don't try to get them healed. I don't, and yet they want me to try so hard. Sometimes I say, well, you go. The Lord has healed you. And then the person is frustrated because they feel like, wait, Pastor Mark, you mean he didn't even pray? People that know me, if you visit me, if you come to my house, chances are I may not even pray for you. I may just speak a word in your life. Why? Because I believe it's not by power, not by mind, but by the Spirit. Because I know how God works through my life. It is by the power of the spoken word. The anointing is the anointing. I won't tell you that secret. I'll let you discover it. I don't want to tell it to you because if I tell it to you, then you're going to pursue me because of that. Now, I want to say this to you. is that I, I don't try so hard to get anybody here because it's not me that heals. My responsibility is to draw your eyes to Jesus. So when you lift up your eyes to Jesus, healing comes